Hello everyone and welcome to this week's What's for Dinner. In true Mallory fashion, I forgot to film yesterday. So uh, let me just tell you what this week's, we don't really have a theme this week. So most of the recipes this week are from this gimme ish dish. I've been really into Instagram lately, so uh, follow me if you haven't. And a really cool YouTuber that I watch, she was making a bunch of recipes from hers. Like she just makes a lot of her recipes. So I don't know who actually, I think the lady's name is Star that owns the website, but it's called the skinny ish dish. So tonight I'm making, hold on. Okay, anyway, so tonight, and I can kind of walk you through what we had for last night. I need to stop wearing the shirt, but it's huge. It gets in the way when I'm cooking. Anyway. But it's comfy, uh, right? And yeah, kind of. It was something that I wore when I was pregnant, and so it was really comfortable, but now it's just so big that it gets in the way. Anyway, so tonight we're having one pot smoked sausage broccoli pasta. Um, like I said, it's from this dish. I will leave that down below. Uh, I'll leave the link to it. The other one that we made last night was pancake sausage muffins, sausage pancake muffins. And basically that one is really simple. You just have to take a flapjack mix. I use Kodiak cakes. You can use any one you'd like to. And then you make it into muffins by adding a, a cup and a half of water. That may change depending on which pancake mix you use, but it may not. Um, two teaspoons of vanilla and then you dice up sausage. We used chicken sausage and you put that in there and it was so good. And then you cook it for 18 minutes. It was delicious. But for tonight, I have just chopped up an onion. We actually had about half of an onion left. It calls for a whole onion, but it's okay. So I've chopped up half of an onion, or diced up half of an onion, and it's now in the skillet. And I'm also going to add in three to four, we'll use four, four cloves of minced garlic. It calls for fresh garlic, but you know me, that's not my style. So we're gonna use the minced garlic in the container. And if you're using this as well, one half of a teaspoon equals one cloves of garlic. So I'm using a teaspoon right now, and so I'll just use two for four cloves of garlic. And I'm gonna let that like brown up, cook. Let me just say cook. I'm gonna let that cook until my onions are translucent, and then we'll start to throw everything else in. In the meantime, I'm going to chop up my turkey sausage. Let me show you which sausage I'm using. Now this sausage is specifically from HEB, but it's just regular original premium smoked turkey sausage. They also had a like jalapeno one too, but I decided to just go with the regular for right now. I'm actually gonna turn this down because I need to add this turkey sausage in in just a second. And I'm gonna add the whole package, but these actually need to cook together, so I don't want them to cook too fast. So I turned it way down. I will say I'm having a lot of fun exploring new recipes that aren't strictly Lean and Green approved. Lean and Greens are great if you're on Octavia, but if you're not, it's kind of nice to just be able to use all kinds of things, like be able to use starchy vegetables now. But I am really enjoying, you know, getting to explore and experiment a little bit with things that I haven't used in the past seven, eight months. Things like um, fruit. I have missed fruit a lot. so. In my what I eat in a days, like I'm filming one today, I have a lot of fruit and it's because I've missed it, you know? And fruit is totally okay. But when you're in your weight loss phase, it can be difficult to lose weight when you're adding in a lot of natural sugar. So like today I had an apple, I had a banana, I had raspberries, I had grape, man, I had a lot of fruit today. So it's just finding things in moderation. So it's something that you have to look forward to if you are on Optivia. If you're not on Optivia and you're already eating fruit, it's not that big of a deal. But I do remember missing fruit a lot when I was on program. And that's one of the biggest questions that I get asked is about fruit and why it's not allowed, why it is allowed. Whoop. Anyway, okay, so I've added in my sausage. I'm gonna let that cook a little bit. I'm gonna turn it back up. Just a little bit. I just want the sausage, it's, it's cooked. You know, it's already cooked, you could eat it like this, but I just want it to get warm and start to mix flavors with the onion. Ah! I just shot onion at myself with the onion and the garlic. So we're gonna let that go for a little bit. And while that's going on, I'm gonna show you what else you need for this recipe. Okay, so for the rest of this recipe, I'm gonna read this out. Like I said, this is not my recipe, but I will leave it down below. 
You need two cups of chicken broth. I prefer low sodium chicken broth, but use whatever you like. You also need a half a cup of 2% milk. That's another thing that I've missed that I have enjoyed having again. Um, you need some Lowry seasoning. You need a half a teaspoon of that. You need eight ounces of noodles. You can use any kind of noodles. And typically, I don't know why I didn't grab it, but I usually like bonza noodles and I forgot to get them. I just got regular. Um, but I'll use half of this package. You need five cups of broccoli. This is only, oh, this is perfectly, this is five cups. And then you need some grated Parmesan cheese and then of course salt and pepper to taste. So the next thing that I'm gonna do after this is finished melding together, marinating, what's the word? After this is finished, you know, I don't really know. <laughs> So I'm just gonna start adding things in from now. I'm gonna stir in the chicken broth and the milk first, and then from there, I will stir in seasoned salt, elbow noodles, or any kind of noodles, and my broccoli. So let me do that. So two cups of chicken broth. And this is not supposed to be a super creamy pasta, but with the milk in it, it does have a little bit of a creamy factor. Well, I'll be dang, look at that. That was perfectly two cups. Pretty darn good. And then I need a half a cup of 2% milk. Of course, you can use milk, real milk, when you're on Octavia. You just don't get a lot of it. It's kind of a lot more bang for your buck if you use things like almond milk, coconut milk, things like that. So half a cup of the milk going in. I'm gonna put in my half a teaspoon of Lowry seasoning salt, half a teaspoon of this. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in my broccoli. Oh, and my noodles, hello. I'm gonna add in my broccoli and my noodles. And we're gonna let this come to a boil and simmer, right? Yeah, and then the last thing that I'm gonna have to add at the end is just the Parmesan cheese, right? Yes, so I'm gonna stir in half of these noodles really quickly. let this boil a little bit. Then I'm gonna cover it, reduce the heat, and let it simmer. But then I'll come back to you after all that. And you're gonna let it do that for about 12 to 14 minutes until your pasta is cooked. That's what you're looking for in this, is to make sure that your pasta is not crunchy, but is perfectly cooked. Okay, so it's been going for about 14 minutes, I guess you could say. And I tried the noodles, and they are perfect. I'm gonna turn it off now, but. I had a little taste of it when I was tasting the noodle and man, it is so good. And because you've kind of let the broccoli steam with it, the broccoli breaks down. So if you've got really big chunks of broccoli, they break down into smaller flor. Is it called florets? Yeah. Florets, to smaller florets. florets. Really, I should let Robbie do the cooking because I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. But anyway, it's gonna be delicious, super healthy. You've got a healthy protein, you've got your healthy veggies. You do have a starch in there, you do have a, like a carb in there, that's gonna be your pasta. Like I said, you can use chickpea pasta, you can use whole wheat pasta. I had a brain fart and forgot to do that. So, lots of good stuff in here. But thanks for watching today. Hello everybody. Tonight for dinner we are having creamy white chicken chili. It's currently 9.30 in the morning, so I'm gonna cook it now, get it on the crock pot, get it in the crock pot. Um, so that it's ready to go for dinner time. Robbie's parents are coming, but we don't know exactly when they're gonna come. So it could be six, it could be eight, but either way, because it's in the crock pot and I can just put it on warm, we can eat dinner whenever. Now there are a ton of renditions and variations to this recipe, but the one that I'm using is the skinniest dish. I will leave her recipe down below. You'll see that a lot of my recipes are hers. I really enjoy her cooking. She tries to make things super, super simple, which is exactly what I like. So let me show you exactly what you need and how you can make this chili at your house. There's not too, too much, honestly. And then we'll get going. Okay, so for this recipe, you're going to need one to two pounds of, mine has been thawing in the sink, 
I'm gonna leave it in the sink for a second, but raw chicken breast. So I've got that in some hot water thawing out. You're also going to need two 15 and a half ounce cans of Great Northern Beans. And somebody on my last, or on my uh, grocery haul video, did let me know that Great Northern Beans and Navy Beans are not the same. So you need two of these. You also need two four ounce cans of diced green chilies for a little bit of spice. I think this, this um, I think this recipe is gonna be a little bit spicy, but we'll see. So you need that. You also need one and a half cups of frozen corn. You need one and three fourths cup of chicken broth. I use low sodium, use whatever you'd like. I really can't taste the difference. You need two teaspoons of cumin. Two teaspoons of garlic powder, which I'm honestly hoping I have that much. Two teaspoons of onion powder. I definitely have enough of that. Two teaspoons of chili powder, also hoping I have enough of this. Um, one teaspoon of salt. A fourth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This will give it a nice kick and a little bit goes a long way, so be careful. One teaspoon of Lowry seasoned salt. She uses a lot of this. One teaspoon of pepper. Half a cup of half and half. This is fat free half and half. You can use whatever you'd like. She doesn't really specify, so hopefully this will be okay. And four ounces or half a block of light cream cheese. I just use the one third less fat. You can also top it with like tortilla strips, avocado, cilantro, bell peppers, diced tomatoes, whatever you'd like, lime, lemon, I would probably go with lime, um, Greek yogurt, sour cream, stuff like that will be really, really good in this. So, oh, and of course, you definitely wanna to top it with cheese. So let's get started on the actual recipe. Okay, so my crock pot is plugged in, but the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my chicken breast down in the bottom one chicken breast and two chicken breasts. So just nestle those in there. And then I'm going to add in everything except for my half and half and my cream cheese. So let me just start adding things in. All right, so let's just do our seasonings and get them over with real fast. So we need two teaspoons of basically everything here except for our cayenne pepper. So two, two, two teaspoons of, oh man. My onion powder is a little. A little clumpy, but it'll be okay. Okay, that should be good. Two teaspoons of that. Two teaspoons of my garlic powder. Oh my. Abe doesn't, that's okay. Abe doesn't like garlic powder, apparently. Well, honestly, this is either going to be right at two teaspoons or not enough, so I'm just gonna pour the whole thing in. Okay, chili powder, which is probably gonna be the same thing, to be honest with you. But this one, I don't wanna over, yeah. Same thing, we're gonna do the whole thing. A little flavor never hurt anybody. And we're gonna add in our two teaspoons of cumin. Hi, Chini Boo. Shiner, who is not supposed to be in the kitchen, is always my little sous chef. Mostly because he's hoping I'll drop something. We weighed him last night and he's gained like 10 pounds since the baby was born. Crazy dog. But he's still super active when he's outside, so okay. Next, we need a fourth a teaspoon of our cayenne pepper. Like I said, a little bit of this goes a long way. Very spicy. One teaspoon of Lowry seasoning salt. And then we need our salt and pepper to taste, which it says one teaspoon, but it's okay. That should be enough. That should be good. Okay, now I'm gonna add in my chicken broth. So I need one and three fourths cup of this. So one cup. Come on. And three fourths of a cup. Perfect. 
Then let's add in our beans and our diced tomatoes, our diced tomatoes, diced chilies. I need, I need to actually open the can. So let's add in this first. Put that in our corn, frozen corn. Make sure you get frozen corn. One, two, or one and a half, sorry. one and a half. Now let's pour in our canned things. And she doesn't say on here if you should drain it. But I'm gonna drain one and not drain the other. There's not a whole lot of juice in it, honestly. Be very careful when working with cans. I think I've told this story on my channel before, but when I was six, I cut my finger open and had to have stitches. All right, next is our great northern beans, which I've never had these before, so I wonder how they taste. I probably actually have. It's probably a lie, honestly. I just didn't know I was having it. So like I did with the last one, I'm gonna go ahead and, there's a lot of liquid in these, so I think I might drain both of them, or at least drain most of them them. Okay. That looks kind of slimy. I chose to make this, oop, I chose to make this today because we're like going back up into the 70s again. That's life in Texas, but today our low was in the 30s. So of course that was this morning and we're having this for dinner, but you know, whatever. Okay, so this card got filled up. So I don't know how much of it it cut off, but basically I've put everything in except for the half and half in the cream cheese. I'm gonna put the lid on the crock pot and let this go on low for seven to eight hours. And then we're gonna add in some stuff and shred the chicken. But I will come back, of course, when we're at seven to eight hours. There we go. Okay, so guess who forgot to update you on what I did next? It was super, super simple. We took the chicken breast out and Robbie actually shredded the chicken for me and then we threw it right back in. Then we threw in the half a cup of half and half and then half a cup or half a cup, half of the block of cream cheese. And I cut it up and diced it up into about nine different pieces so it wasn't one huge block trying to melt. But we're gonna let this go for about 30 minutes and then it should be ready to eat. welcome back so right now I'm gonna be showing you a quick banana bread recipe with some like sugar replacements and things that you can use to make things a little bit healthier the baby's in her car so you may hear like skidding and all kinds of things it's like a now she's starting the car <laughs> her keys are attached to her car and the keys make noise and the car makes noise so you may hear that throughout this video but anyway today I'm gonna to be making a banana bread that I can use for desserts but also for breakfast I was explaining this in my meal plan and grocery haul for this week when I was younger if my mom had made banana bread I would eat it for breakfast until it was gone like every morning I would have a slice of banana bread until there was no more because I loved banana bread now I actually don't have a loaf pan which is kind of strange it's something I should probably get but Instead of doing banana bread, I'm gonna make banana muffins. It should be the same thing. It's just gonna take a little bit less long, I think, a little shorter amount of time to cook. So let me show you exactly what you need for this recipe. Okay, so for this recipe, you're going to need three bananas, preferably ripe. So I had these two. And then we just bought bananas. So I took one and put it in the oven while the oven was preheating and now it's, you know, it's riper, I can mash it. You're also going to need one cup of sugar uh, substitute. I'm using Swerve, you can also use Splenda. I'm trying to think what else you could use, but I'm just using Swerve. You need a cup and a fourth of all-purpose flour. Okay, Baby is not cooperating, so she's naked. She just finished eating lunch and she got herself a whole heck of a mess. So, we just took her little onesie off and she's been rolling around in her car. She's not happy right now. She's making this very difficult. Yes, you are. Anyway, so you need a cup and a fourth of all-purpose flour. You need a half a cup. It says natural applesauce, but this is just unsweetened mashed up apples. It's basically that. So you're gonna use a half a cup of that. You're also going to use one and a half teaspoons of baking soda and a half teaspoon of salt. Basically, you're gonna mash the bananas, which you're gonna see me do in just a second, and I just know that this baby's not really gonna cooperate, so I'm gonna tell you what to do and then I'll do a montage of it. You're gonna mash your bananas and then put everything in the mixer together 
let it mix until it's blended. You may have a couple chunks. Um, if you've ever made banana bread before, you know that's super, super normal. And then I'm gonna throw mine into some muffin tins and cook it until the bread would go for 60 minutes. So I'm gonna probably check mine at 30 just to see where it's at, but let's do that. so small watch the clock ticking off the wall but tonight i'm letting it go spend my coin for sure i'm gonna be myself or i could be someone else no one's stopping me now i'm gonna skip my breaks i'm gonna make mistakes i just wanna feel alive it's just what I do when I'm out, so Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me Drive a faster car Lay my troubles to rest Blow the smoke through my cigarette City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me They just came out of the oven. They're a little brown on top, but I think that's. I think banana bread also does that, so let's take a bite. Let us just compare this to regular banana bread. It's very hot. Texture is spot on. It's definitely not as sweet as banana bread. But it's pretty good with like a little bit of butter on it, like spray butter or just regular butter. It, it's amazing. So, um, there's that recipe. There's just a little dessert or breakfast recipe for you. Hi guys and welcome back to What's For Dinner. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Tonight we're gonna to be having something called slow cooker chicken and stuffing, which looked and sounded delicious. We're gonna be throwing some green beans on the side of it. Uh, I may make like some rolls on the side of it. I'm not exactly sure just yet, but it's about 11 a.m. in the morning and I'm sure we'll eat around 6, 15, 6, 30, 6, 30-ish tonight. So I wanted to go ahead and get it in the crock pot because the longer you let it go, the more moist, the more like, tender it's gonna be. So let me first start by telling you exactly what you're gonna need. So you need about three large chicken breasts. Um, mine are thawing in the sink. Um, so you need three large chicken breasts. You need one can of, this came off, but one can of Healthy Request cream of chicken soup. You need one cup of reduced sodium broth, chicken broth, beef broth, veggie broth, whatever you'd like to use. And then you're gonna need about six ounces, this is 16 ounces, so I'm definitely not gonna use this whole thing, but about six ounces of dry stuffing mix. Any stuffing mix will do. And then the last thing you're gonna need is half a cup of sour cream, now, or fat-free sour cream. Now, our HEB did not put it in our order this week for HEB curbside. I'm pretty sure I ordered it like 99.9% .9 sure, but just realized this morning that they didn't actually give it to us. So we're gonna use some Greek yogurt that I have on hand, plain Greek yogurt. 
if you are on a healthy journey, you know that you can use plain Greek yogurt for sour cream any day. So we'll just use this and it should be just fine. The first thing that I'm gonna do is plug my crock pot in and I'm gonna go ahead and spray the bottom just because I don't want anything to stick. I'm just gonna use some pan cooking spray. Okay, so I'm gonna spray the inside of my crock pot. I need some of those crock pot liners. I may actually have some, honestly. I just haven't been using them. Anyway, so I'm gonna do that and I'm going to put my chicken breasts in the bottom. Nice and snug. Okay, and then I'm gonna set that back for a second and I'm going to grab a bowl. This bowl should be just fine. And into it, I'm gonna put my half a cup of sour cream or Greek yogurt and my one can of Healthy Request chicken, cream of chicken soup. Okay, this is my fourth a cup, so I'm just gonna grab two. I'm gonna go ahead and mix them until they're fully combined and then spread that on top of my chicken. I'm gonna put it on top of my chicken in a single layer if possible. And then I'm gonna use my rubber spatula to spread it out just a bit. Try and cover every piece of chicken breast. Okay, then you can either take the same bowl if you want to or you can use a different bowl. I don't wanna dirty something else, I'm just gonna clean out this bowl really quickly. Okay, and then to this bowl, or to the same bowl, I'm gonna add in my chicken broth, so a cup of chicken broth and my six ounces of stuffing. Let's see. Here's a cup. Okay. And then I'm just gonna eyeball about six ounces of stuffing. Okay. That should be good. I'm gonna stir this together. I'm gonna try and wet all of my stuffing here. And then, lastly, I'm just gonna pour this over my chicken. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on and then put this on low. I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna do seven hours. I'm gonna put it for eight hours, but I'll set a timer. Alexa, set a timer for seven hours for dinner. Dinner timer, seven hours, starting now. And then after the seven hours is done, I'm just gonna give it a stir. It should kind of fall apart and then that will be dinner. We'll put some green beans to it or with it, and then maybe, like I said, maybe dinner rolls, but this should be really delicious. Okay guys, that's it. I have a random hair. That is it, that is it for our first, well, not first, I know I've done a couple of these way back, but that is it for this What's For Dinner. Let me know what you think. If you like it, definitely let me know down in the comments or leave a thumbs up. I enjoyed making this actually when I remembered to do it. And I also think it's really great to just have meal ideas that you can pull out whenever. I know I enjoy watching these from other people just to get ideas. Even if I don't make that exact recipe, it's always something that's like, oh, I could do this instead and this would be really good. And Anyway, so let me know, like this, comment down below. Like I said, all of the recipes will be down in the description box. But until next time, I love you all and God bless you.